say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Waiters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello, and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. I'm his mom. She is my mom. She's not even kidding. I can't believe on air that you actually claimed me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Growing up, you're always telling stories. And I'm going to brag on you just a little bit. You took it a step further and started writing poetry. When did you start writing poetry? I think when Jonathan left for college. It's my younger brother. The house got so quiet. And I thought, uh, you know, you hear this talk about the empty nest syndrome. Mm -hmm. I always thought, well, that's just, you know, it's true, it's real. And I thought, this is not good, you know, walking through the house, it's too quiet. So I started writing because your girls would ask me about what was it like when you grew up on the farm? So I would write stories about growing up on the farm. The stories well, that you told me, too, uh -huh, as, as a kid. Uh -huh. There was always insects or fish or yeah. something like that. And uh, I would send them these poems through the mail. And uh, your dad is the one who decided, we're going to put these together and put it in a little book. So he's the one who decided to, to do that. And then you joined the Poetry Society, mm -hmm. is that what you call it? Uh-huh. And then you entered some poet poems in contests and you won. Can you Did tell us, get, quit being modest for just a second, tell us some of the... Some of the... Your great-grandfather played the banjo and the guitar and the piano and the fiddle, a little bit of everything. And I would hear these old tunes over and over again, and I think they affected me. So what I really enjoyed writing was ballads, and I would write one every year for the Kentucky State Poetry Society, and did, did fairly well. Come on, Mom. <laughs> you, won, you won some contests, did you not? Yes, I did. And she did, she's being modest. It is Mother's Day weekend. You're gonna see this show all week long on KET. And uh, that's my chance to brag on mom a little bit. You know, you and dad, you fed us once a week, whether we need it or not. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know what? Mom cooked for us kids and we ate like horses. Probably had five meals a day. Mm -hmm. I mean, very, we're always hungry. Very well balanced meals. And I watched you and I watched dad and I watched everybody around me. Then when I met Ryle Dupree, the French chef, he kind of took it a step further into some areas I never knew about. But uh, thanks for feeding me. You're welcome. I think you're supposed to eat at least once a day. At least. And we ate good. <laughs> but, uh, Three or four or five times a day. <laughs> but you know, we've got some stuff that mom used to cook as a kid. I remember the smells, yeah, remember the smells of the kitchen. I do. I remember your kitchen. I remember, I remember um, my mom's parents' kitchen. You know what I remember about that kitchen? I, I tried to kind of model it up there. I remember the smell. She had a gas stove. She smelled just a little bit of gas all the time. She'd struck a match somewhere all the time and you could smell apples. Mm -hmm. And I remember that smell. And there's one other smell I can't place. But I think we should always keep those memories. Um, memories. Wait a minute. I got an idea. How about country memories? I think we recorded this last year. Let's, let's look at one of mom's poems. Country memories. I remember spring waters that never ran dry, rambles through the meadows and woods beneath a blue summer sky, wading a stream flowing downward to the waters of Floyd's Fork, where I fished with an old cane pole, the bobber and old bottle cork. A new calf or kittens in the barn was an exciting time indeed. I gathered eggs my appointed chore, 
after giving the chickens their feed. A cup of tea from sassafras root was tasty with fried apple pies, and blackberries picked among fence rows might become a warm cobbler prize. Spring greens gathered for the table would be seasoned with smokehouse meat. Fried chicken with gravy and cornbread made a hungry kid ready to eat. Swinging upon sturdy grapevines, picking wildflowers or climbing trees, country roots will grow deep and bare, a rich harvest of memories. What's your memories of Mama Carr's kitchen when she was cooking and stuff? What do you remember? I remember a large uh, vegetable garden, mm -hmm. and uh, she would can. She did a lot of canning. But uh, I think my favorite was the chow chow. I, I, would, I would help, I'd pick out the uh, green tomatoes and wash them and do certain things. But the whole house would smell so good. Now what would she use the chow chow for? Uh, Papa liked chow chow with- uh, Beans? In, beans especially, yeah. and cornbread. And uh, he'd use it just about breakfast with his eggs. He, he would eat it just about any time. We use this in everything from tartar sauce to, like you said, eggs and bacon, hot mm -hmm. dogs. So here's mom's famous chow. You're going to need this very shortly because you're going to want to make some of this. Here's mom's famous chow chow on our Mother's Day special. He can't beat it. Tonight is a special night Ms. Farmer will share her chow chow recipe. Am I correct? You're correct. That's what I'm talking about. Get your pencil and paper and get ready, because here we go. Mrs. Farmer, or I call her mom. <laughs> we got all these beautiful vegetables. <laughs> Look what we got. Yes, sir. All right, tell us what we do. Right. I like a big batch. Big batch, one, all at one time. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Four cups of onions, four cups of cabbage, four cups of green tomatoes, four cups of sweet green peppers, one cup of sweet red peppers, and also you've got things like squash, you may have some peppers, Throw those in too. All right, now I'm gonna stand back and watch you go. You're gonna take these, they've already been washed, and then you start cutting them up. I'm gonna stand out of the way because you got a knife and it's sharp. Okay, all right, I'll start with the green pepper. Now, if you are watching us do this and you wanna make this yourself, but don't have a garden, there are so many farmer's markets around Kentucky, and just about every town has a farmer's market and you can find those around the state just by doing a little bit of research, Googling farmers markets. You don't have to follow this to the T. As long as you have these combination of whatever you decide to put in it, you can't go wrong. I don't think so. I really don't. Because, you know, some years you don't have a lot of one type or another. Mm -hmm. And so you put in something else. Whatever you got, you put in something else. All right, now you've got them cut up. You have to get them a little bit smaller now, correct? Yes. Now what in the world have you got there? It's a chopper. A chopper. It's similar to what my grandmother used to use. I, try, I do everything just about like she did. If you try to uh, puree them, or you're gonna end up with a soup. You yeah. Know? So I do it the old fashioned way, it just suits. So you do it in the bowl, I see. So now, once you get it to this point, what's your next step? Next step is to add your pickling salt. I'm gonna put that I right, think this right is in there ready. for you. So you put your pickling salt in. Mm-hmm. Stir then it up. Stir it up. Stir it up. Put it in the refrigerator. Put it in the refrigerator overnight. So 12 hours. Mm-hmm. And voila. Now we need to take this and rinse it and drain it. Oh really, like in a colander mm -hmm. type thing? Like in a colander. So rinse it so you get the, get the pickling salt mm -hmm. off. Put it in a colander, rinse it, let it drain, and then it goes to the stove. And uh, put our three and one half cups of apple cider vinegar and one and one half cups of water, two tablespoons of mustard seed, one tablespoon of celery seed, one and a half teaspoon of turmeric, four and one half cups of sugar. You pour all of this over your vegetables and bring it to a gentle boil for five minutes. You don't get it rocking. You, you just don't get, get it rocking. It just needs a gentle boil. After that, you're ready to put it in your jars. You ready for me to start putting this mm -hmm. in here? Now, back on the burner, we have a large pot prepared to do what? Hot water bath for your jars of 
chow chow. And how long do you put them in there? Um, about 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah, 15 minutes will do it. How much space you want on the top? Uh, at least a half an inch. I remember when I was growing up, this is one of my favorite smells. My grandmother would be busy fixing her chow chow, the whole house would smell good. Mm-mm-mm. So you wipe your top off? Yep, I did. You do that just so nothing will keep it from sealing, right? So nothing will bump mm -hmm. in there? Mm-hmm. Now, when you say your hot bath, you, is that hot boiling water or is it? You want it really warm water, put them down in here and let it come to a boil. Gotcha. And then start timing as soon as it comes to a boil, then you start timing for about 15, 15 minutes. minutes. 15 minutes should take care of it. And there they are. All righty. And that's what it looks like. Now, Mom, here in a little while, I want you to read one more something you wrote a while back about me, and I can't be around when you read it because I do kind of get emotional. But I will have you close the show with that in a little while, if you will. But uh, one thing I'd like for you to do is if you were looking for a recipe, and I know where there are hundreds and hundreds of them that we've done and you've done and so on and so forth, where would you go to find these recipes? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. I'd clap if I could, Mrs. Farmer. <laughs> TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com, there's hundreds and hundreds of recipes and you can find all that stuff there. Now, a lot of people, they'll see this show and they say, okay, hey, I like this, and I want an update. If a new show comes up, what would you do? Hit subscribe. That's all you gotta do. In order to be our Facebook friend, what do you have to do? Just hit like. Just hit like. It's exactly what you do, Mrs. Farmer. You act like you said that before. <laughs> I bet you didn't know this, but Nikki's got a mom too. Yes, I did know that. She does. You know I her. I like her. She's a, a good, lot. She's a good lady, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Now, you know, she's told you her Greek heritage. Kalakarinas. Her father came over on the Carpathia, the sister ship to the Titanic, uh -huh. in like 1912, 1913. Interesting story, but she still likes to maintain those traditions, and she makes a soup, an official Greek soup. It's simple, but wonderful. So let's watch an, another mom cook some soup on this Mother's Day special. Grandma. Yes. This is one of my favorite soups. You know, when, when you need a little something for the soul, you've had a bad day. Yes. Chicken soup. Yes. Now, this is a Greek recipe. This was your father's recipe. Yes. Some of the dishes that he made, some of the traditional stuff, is so easy, but so wonderful. So, this is so simple, but let's just get started. How, how, how would he do this? How would you do this? Okay. Well, what this is basically what Dad did. He started with cooking a ch boiling a, a chicken. Always save all the stock. Yes, everything, yeah. yes. And then he poured and he got six cups of, of the stock and then he poured that into a pot. Now something about the bones and cooking the bones down is just all that flavor. It's, it's, a, yeah. little, it's, it's, it's a fuller, richer flavor. When he you... started from the stock, yeah, bottom. Okay, what do we do now? Okay. Do I start heating this? Yes, we need to get it boiling. Mm -hmm. And once that boils, we're going to add a cup of rice. Then, what, then we, once that's done, then we take it, uh, let it simmer, okay? okay? Okay. Then we take, we're going to take three eggs. I'm going to turn this down and let it simmer, Grandma. Okay. And we're to sep we're going to separate the uh, whites from the yolks. All right. I'm glad you're doing that. Okay. We are to beat these until they are stiff. Okay, eggs are stiff. That's the lengthiest part of this whole process. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, I think it, really it is, is. Yeah. Okay. Now you need. Will you pour the egg yolks in? I gently pour them in. Just, just work them slowly. In. Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now we need the juice of one lemon. Okay, Tim. You want to add the add the lemon? Okay. Pour it slowly. Slowly. Then we're going to pour all of this into a big bowl because we have to add the six cups of broth with the rice in here. Slowly, Slowly. little at a time. Now, is this something that we, he would have in his restaurant yes. back in the day? Yep. People liked it. Yeah.
Okay, everything's mixed. And we can pour it back into the pot and just heat it up. And just kind of simmer it? Ready to go, yes. All right, I'm going to stand back because okay. I don't want to wear it. And you could taste it later. Maybe you want more lemon? Now, Dad sometimes would put chicken in. So at this point, any salt, any pepper, any we seasonings? We need to put to, to taste. To taste? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. You trust me? Yes. I just might want some more lemon in it, too. It all depends. You like a lot of pepper, Grandma? Yes. It needs a little more chicken taste, so can we put in a we boiling can. cube? We can. Boiling cube. I can do yes. this. I got it right here. All right, Grandma. Let's try this. Let's try this. Yum. That lemon sets it off. Happy Greek eating. That's wonderful. Now you know what happens when we when we remember our those who came before us. They live forever. Yes. We talk about them, we remember them. Yes. And through things like this, you know, and, and right, right over here, you got some fishing lures that he had with a yeah. picture of him. He's actually posing. Yeah. He was so proud of his fishing skills yes. that he posed in like a field and stream picture for that. Mm -hmm. So this is for your papa. What was his name? Emmanuel. This is Emmanuel's lemon chicken soup. Yummy, yummy. So you do have a mom. I do. Nikki Penelope. Mm -hmm. She's like your mom. She's wonderful. She is wonderful. She's got a good mom. We got the two best in the world. We do. Nobody else can have I know it. That's right. You know what? Uh, we see the world. We've been around. Mm -hmm. Isn't it great to know that we had caring, wonderful parents right. who took care of us? She fed me too. I got she fed. She fed you? Yeah. yeah. She fed me too. And every I time know. she comes over, she feeds me like all kinds of really like fattening food. That's what Greek people do though. You got to feed And she people. just wants to keep shoving right. it down my throat. Right. I know usually accept it but your mom is a great woman tell me a a memory of your mother memory of my mother off the cuff all right she was always scaring us i think we've oh, really? talked about this before yes you never knew the hand would come around the corner no matter where you went or she mom turned the lights that. i know that's so what you said did. you know what your mom sometimes knows about her and i guess it's coming from a big family and a greek family there's Everything is a game, mm -hmm. or everything yes. is a party. Every time you get together. Right. And uh, the thing that we did at Easter, when we had the grandkids over, when they're knocking the eggs, you see a little bit of footage here where they're knocking the eggs together. Right. That's an every Easter tradition. That's Christmases Greek, yeah. are huge, right. monstrous traditions. <laughs> That's right. You know what? She made something not too long ago um, that was so simple. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with complicated stuff. She just took some existing dill pickles and turned right. them sweet. But. On this Mother's Day, and I do eat them all the time. I know Richard. you do. On this Mother's Day, look at the camera and tell Nikki Penelope what you think about her. Uh, happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. We got the best moms in the world. Now, how did you know that that lady sitting right over there, who's, who's a young lady at the time, would make a good mom? I'd say the first thing, she was very pretty. <laughs> and that's a good start. And still is. Yeah. yeah. And she was very smart. Yep. She had a good sense of humor. What was the first time you saw her? I think I was about 17. Oh, no. I saw her when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. We met when we were about eight or nine years old. Really? Yeah. And then so uh, a long time passed and you met her again. Yeah. Where mm. was it? Did you recognize her from that? No. No. We didn't find out until later that we had met before. I was smitten, still am. <laughs> Almost immediately? Yeah. Really, do you yeah. remember where you were? We were at a uh, drive-in restaurant, just, you know, just cruising around and cruising. some of our friends and some of our friends, they knew each, each other and they introduced us. How long after that? Till we married. Till you married? Two years. Two years? Yeah. So, but you were sure from the very beginning. Yes. <clears throat> you still sure? Yeah. You're not going to trade her in? No. <laughs> she might trade me <laughs> in, but that's okay. Daddy, thank uh, you so much for me putting you on the hot seat. Yeah, I know okay. you weren't expecting this, but All right. thank you so much for helping us out with the Mother's Day. Well, I, I hope it's uh, suitable, but uh, I'm not very good at this. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of people know this. Some people might not, but Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen is a family show. That's from the family. Daughter, mother, father. It's funny how that stuff works. Kelly, 
might have some stories on her mama. <laughs> First of all, tell me why she's the greatest mom in the world. She, she, she's not as good as her mama, but she's called. No, I think she... I don't even want to say this in front of her because it'll go it. to her head. But no, she would literally do anything for us. Like, anything you ask for, I mean, she'd give you the shirt off her back. Literally. Even if it's an ugly shirt, you'd Even if, it. Especially if it's an ugly one. <laughs> She's got a lot but, of ugly shirts. Yeah. yeah. No, she would. I mean, always trying to give us anything that we wanted and need, even if we don't need it. She is probably one of the most generous people. Yes. She loves her babies. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And she she's really Mama Bear, protects all of us. Yeah. She protects me, too. Yeah. She's like that. Yeah. Anything else you want to tell us? Any, any stories about when you were little? I was trying to think of some. <laughs> Just like she said about her mom, she used to scare. She would hide under my bed, she'd hide in my closet, anywhere to scare me. I'm scared of the dark to this day because of her. So you're traumatized. Traumatized. Should we call Child Protective Services? Is there some sort of a? Uh, I think sort it's of, too late. Yeah, I'm too old. Too late. But she she was one nice thing. <laughs> There's a lot of nice things, but um, she used to make wedding cakes. And that was my favorite thing. We would just sit. I remember all of us would just sit and wait, and she would let us lick all the beaters, all the frosting. Like that was one of my favorite things. Her loved. icing is to die yes. for. So we just sit and wait. And she she still makes us. the occasional wedding cake. Yeah. Yeah. Kelly, look at your mom. Tell her what you think about her on Mother's Day. Mom, you're the best mommy in the whole wide world. Aww. At home among lofty ridges and deep hollows, he interprets the language of the creatures seeking refuge beneath towering trees. There, beyond building and boulevard, he sits, with back against the smooth gray bowl of a beech tree. Rooted thoughts search the dark, rich soil where fern and fungi flourish. The spider, master of design, spins silken stays to span the range between two branches of a dogwood. Ants scramble in unpredictable patterns across the floor of leaf mold. Two crows on the wing assault the silence with raucous calls. A deer from guarded stance steps out of the tangled thicket onto a winding track rutted by hoof and claw. Wisdom resounds in the soft cooing of a dove. Stringent time slowly dissolves, lost in the verdant spirit of the woodland. Peace is its own reward. Restored, he returns with the rush, our woodwise sun. With him comes the vital fragrance of earth, wind, and sun. His words are akin to the waters of a wooded stream, rippled waves of sound woven with song, threaded with strands of sunlight. Thinking about him and him, uh, he, he would come back and talk about being in the woods and sitting and watching for animals and thinking, thinking, you know. And I think I had a picture in my mind of him in the woods and setting and waiting for an animal, but in the meantime, thinking, you know, about his life and about what he had been through. And I think that was on my mind. Now that has been a nice, peaceful little show in front of the waterway. Do you like this nice? Peaceful water. I do. Feature in I the like background. this rocket. You like the too. fish too, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, that's a half hour that's passed us by. So, meanwhile, it's all about good times, good friends, good eats. We'll see you next week on a brand new Tim Palmer's Country Kitchen. We have been catering for a lot of years, and I wanted everything to have a specific taste. Therefore, I had to come up with my own products. Right. A dry rub, chow chow, and our barbecue sauce are something that we use in all our catering gigs. I developed this barbecue sauce that is not the th really thick, syrupy stuff that you get. This is, has more of a natural, it's got some pepper and onion flavor, and you can actually see the particulates in there. You know, a lot of people are asking what we use our dry rub on. Now, obviously, pork and chicken are two of the more common things. Also, we've been using on our corn on the cob with butter. That is I'm telling you, this it's stuff wonderful. with potatoes is fantastic. So 40 years in the making, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Dry Rub. Mm -hmm.